Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q4 FY23 Results Conference Call of Kalpadru Power Transmission Limited, hosted by MK Global Financial Services. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an optionally free to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Avinit Anand from MK Global Financial Services. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Anand. Thanks, Nirav. Good morning, everyone. I'm Abhinit Anand from MK Global Financial Services. First of all, I'd like to thank the management for giving us this opportunity to host the call. I will hand over the call to Mr. Vishesh Pachnanda, VP and Head Investor Relations. Over to you, Vishesh. Thanks, Abhinit. Thank you for hosting the call today for us. A very good morning to all the participants. This is Vishesh Pachanda. I'm pleased to welcome you to Kalpatu Power Transmission Limited earning call for the fourth quarter and the full year ended 31st March 2023. We have with us today the management team represented by Mr. Manish Monor, the Managing Director and CEO. Mr. S. K. Tripathi, Deputy Managing Director. Mr. Amit Kuplenswar, Director of Group Strategy. And Mr. Ram Patodia, CFO and President Finance. We'll start with a few minutes of opening remarks by Mr. Manish, and then we can open the floor for Q&A. With that, and without any further delay, over to you, Manish, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vishesh. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on the call today. As always, it is a pleasure to interact with all of you. Let me begin with our full year performance in detail, highlighting progress on our strategic priorities and then outlook for the financial year 24. Before I start, let me put forth that with the completion of the merger and the appointed date being 1st April 2022, our standalone results represent the combined standalone financials of erstwhile JMC and KPTS. The performance for FY23 has been remarkable for the combined entity as we continue to accelerate profitable growth and build on our position as a leading player in the global ETC market. We have recorded roadworthy performance on many fronts, which includes robust top line growth, remarkable in strategic order wins, stable profitability, and notable management of working capital and debt levels. A strong diversified order book and favorable business outlook across all our verticals provides us with a huge runway to growth in the next couple of years. Having said that, we will continue to focus on accelerating growth while improving profitability and upholding the strength of a strong balance sheet. The financial year 2023 has been a landmark year for KPTL as we have completed the merger of JMC with KPTL. The merger reinforces our market position in high growth EPC business verticals and places us favorably to leverage on the global push for infrastructure development and fast paced adoption of clean and green energy. In the last few months, the benefits of the merger have already started to kick in in some form or other. We have improved our ticket size of ornaments, particularly in the civil business, as we have secured numerous high value orders in water, BNF, and urban infra business. We continue to gain traction in expanding our civil business in both domestic and international markets as we have added new clients and improved our global reach. Additionally, on the finance cost front, we are already working with our lenders to provide parity in terms of finance costs between Earthwell, GMC, and KPTS. We are already seeing positive momentum on that front. We have also internally realigned our operating structure to improve efficiency and reduce costs. The benefits of all these actions will increasingly improve our performance in the coming quarters. Coming now on the performance front, our consult revenue grew by 11% to reach Rs. 16,361 crores and standalone business grew by 16% YOY for the full year 23 on the back of robust execution. <coughs> our consult EBITDA margin is at 9.1% and the standalone EBITDA margin at 8.9% for financial 23. This EBITDA margin includes an amount of 109 crores shown as exceptional item in published results with respect of an award obtained by an erstwhile power transmission subsidiary and is contractually received by the company. With improved execution of profitable projects, productivity improvement initiatives, and merger-related benefits, we expect margin performance to improve going forward. In FY23, we put considerable efforts on project closure and timely collection along with adopting a prudent approach to capital management, 
which has helped us to maintain our finance costs despite the ongoing environment of increasing interest rates. Our finance costs as a percentage of sales has remained at around 2% at the standalone level, which is nearly similar to the year financial year 22. We are confident to maintain finance costs as a percentage of sales around 2% for FY24 also. Our net debt at the standalone level has declined by 373 crores GOQ to Rs 1680 crores at the end of March 23. While the net debt excluding North Zone Reserve stands at Rs 1800 crores at the end of March 23. Our net working capital days are below 100 days at the end of March 23 for the combined NGD. During FY23, we have invested close to Rs 500 crores for CapEx for improving project delivery and achieving our growth targets in FY24 and 25. We expect CapEx in the range of 250 to 275 crores in FY24. Our standalone PPT after exception items grew by 48% ROI to Rs 738 crores for FY23 with a margin of 5.1%. Similarly, PAT rose by 52% ROI to Rs 531 crores for standalone business. At the control level, the reported VAT was Rs 435 crores for financial year 23. Our order book, including LMG Sweden and personal general, was at Rs 45,918 crores as on March 23. Additionally, we have an L1 position of around 4,000 crores. In FY23, our order includes grew by 39% YOY to Rs 25,241 crores. Our vote in order inflows was led by TND, BNS, and Water Business. In FY24 till date, we have received orders of Rs 4,114 crores. This is including orders of Rs 1,229 crores declared in a press release yesterday. We are targeting order inflows of over Rs 26,000 crores in FY24. Coming now to individual business verticals. In the TND business, we have secured orders worth Rs 10,000 crores in FY23. The TND business order book, including our international subsidiary, is at a record high of around 16,500 crores. Additionally, we have an L1 position of over 2,500 crores in the TND business. During the year, we strengthen our position in existing and new geographies by securing various high value projects. We are also selected as a preferred EPC partner in a, by a major utility in Australia for executing a large size EPC project for renewable integration. This is a significant achievement for us and demonstrates our capability to manage and execute such large size complex projects at the global level. The business outlook remains very promising on the back of the push for renewables and setup of new TND infrastructure in India and international markets. We have a huge tender pipeline of over 50,000 crores in the next 20 to 24 months for the TND business. In the international market, we have robust visibility with tender pipeline over USD 4 billion, especially in focus markets in Africa, Latin America, Asia, and Middle East. In Factor Brazil, we have focused on project closure and strengthening our organization in FY23. Vastal reported a full-year revenue of 439 crores with an order book of Rs. 1140 crores. Similarly, at LMG Sweden, we have achieved revenue of Rs. 1002 crores with an order book of 1009 crores for 23. In our BNF business, we have achieved both of 25% YOY to Rs. 4136 crores in FY23 on the back of robust execution and a healthy order book. We continue to improve our market standing by securing new clients and improving our presence in areas like data centers, institutional buildings, processing plants. Additionally, this year we have secured our second BNF project in the international market in line with our strategy to expand our civil business to new markets outside India. Our water business continues to be on a solid growth trajectory as revenue grew 54% via wire to reach Rs. 2622 crores in FY23. We have secured orders worth Rs. 7,553 crores and have an order book of 12,476 uh, crores in FY23. We are consistently investing in strengthening our capability in order to improve our competitive position to execute large size projects in the water business. In the railway business, revenue grew by 4% to reach Rs. 1652 crores. We continue to adopt a prudent approach and remain selective in bidding given the higher competitive intensity. During FY23, we have secured orders of Rs. 1557 crores and the addition of two large size metro electrification projects. We are increasingly looking to send our business in areas like metro electrification, uh, SNT, RRTS, and high speed rail. In the oil and gas business, reported revenues of 985 crores for financial 23. Our business visibility in this business remains very good in India and international markets. 
we have received qualification to bid in six, seven countries in the oil and gas business, and we expand, expect to expand our international reach in the near future. Our urban business grew by 23% via Y203 growth on the back of execution of a new project secure during 23. We are improving our capabilities to secure projects in metro rail, elevated roads, public spaces, airports, etc. Our road good SPVs continue to witness good growth backed by improvement in traffic. Our per day revenue increased by 21% via Y to rupees 58 lakh in Q423. We have infused an additional amount of around 71 crores in FY23, largely to fund the repayment of loans. We have appointed advisors to evaluate the scale of road good assets and we are receiving active interest from large foreign investors. In Srisugam Logistics, we achieved revenue of 109 crores with debit of 22.5 crores. The business remains under pressure given lower utilization of warehouses because of decline in procurement by government agencies. During FY23, we have collected around 70 crores from the sale of Indore real estate. We aim to complete the sale of the balance inventory by calendar year 24. The board is mindful of the importance of returns to shareholders and as a result of the strong performance and ongoing confidence in the strategy, it is pleased to recommend a dividend of rupees 7 per share. Now moving to the outlook of financial 24, I want to mention here that our business today has never been so strong in terms of size, scale, capabilities, diversified business mix, and financial profile. In this context, we will continue to manage our business with agility and focus on consistent and profitable growth and reach to pre-COVID level of profitability from a mid-term perspective. <clears throat> Additionally, our focus remains on the speedy resolution of non-core assets. We expect standalone revenue growth in excess of 30% for financial 24 and PBT margin in the range of 4.5 to 5%. We expect finance cost as a percentage of sales to be in the range of 2%. We are targeting to achieve growth in the range of 18 to 20% for FY24. Our tender activity across all our business remains favorable and provides a huge runway for growth. We expect order growth, including our Swadia, Sweden, and Brazil subsidiaries to be at around 26,000 crores for financial 24. However, we remain watchful for various uncertainties related to geopolitics, inflation, commodity and currency volatility, and are accordingly navigating them through strengthening our risk management and building a diversified business and improving our execution capabilities. With this, I would request the moderator to open the lines for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Renu Bain from IFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, my first question is on um, the synergy benefits. Um, if you can help us uh, understand what kind of operating level benefits are we expecting and by when uh, should we start accruing the benefits to the full? Uh, aligned with this, uh, what are the timelines and progress in terms of divestment of uh, the road boot assets and other non-core assets uh, for um, uh, the portfolio overall now? That's the first question. Uh, good morning, Reno. Good morning. Uh, Reno, our merger benefits, uh, if I had to put it in three buckets, uh, one being the interest cost advantage, second being advantage on productivity, and third being the advantage of getting large size projects, all of them have started in some form. On the interest cost, uh, uh, you know, uh, the difference between KPTL and GMC in terms of the rates was closer to 200 basis points. Majority of the bankers have now agreed to get the erstwhile GMC limits to the KPTL cost of interest. And a lot of them would happen starting from Q1 itself. Some have happened in Q4, but you know, the new, uh, the filing for the new rates and the new limits. So we expect a lot of it to happen from Q1. So on that ground, we expect, uh, you know, as a mall entity, at least 60 to 70 crores coming in as gains, uh, getting into the next year itself. On the productivity levels, a lot of our back-ended functions, primarily finance, HR, IT, project management, PMG growth, 
QA, risk management, all of them have been merged. Wherein we have looked at keeping the best resources there and the balance has been deployed to various projects or have looked at opportunities outside. We've not seen a lot of people leaving us, but they've gone into different roles within the group, given the kind of growth which is happening. And those benefits have also started coming in. On the IT front, now we have a unified SAP wherein the entire organization is, is uh, running and that also brings in cost savings on every aspect, whether it is AMC, whether it is licenses or anything and everything. The largest benefits comes from our ability to bid for large scale projects with integrated capabilities of civil, mechanical, electrical. And you've seen our, our, the, the success in airports, the success in um, urban metro, the success in international projects, including civil projects, our ability to bid for large projects, and you know the entire uh, ability to bid for higher value projects and not smaller value projects is helping us. So if you ask me, all of that has started. Um, on a quantifiable business basis, we have said that we should be seeing 100 crore plus benefit coming in over a period of time because of the merger. And I'm pretty confident that you'll see that coming in from 23, 24 itself. So that's the first one. On the second one, on the road boot assets, uh, we have appointed advisors um, and we expect to sign a non-binding offer for at least one out of the three assets in the current quarter itself. Uh, we, are, we are seeing good interest from a few large players, from actually not few, from four or five large players. Uh, and it's pretty confident. I know we have, we have said this in the past also a few times, but this time we, we see huge traction. We're pretty confident of signing at least one non-binding offer for the largest road boot asset in the current quarter itself. Got it. Right. Uh, then coming to the core business, TND, obviously you've seen uh, quite uh, strength in terms of order flow trajectory and tailwind. Uh, how do how are we looking at this business mom, uh, momentum to sustain growth both from domestic as well as international business? And also aligned with this, uh, what would be the status on the low margin fixed price projects which are being completed? Uh, so by when are these projects expect, expected to be completed and by when do we expect the margins in the core TND business uh, reverting back to double digit levels? Um, so Reno, uh, I think uh, let me first speak about growth. Um, all our business segments, okay, except maybe railway, are targeting a high, high double digit growth for the next year. Whether it is TL business, whether it is BNF, whether it is water, whether it is urban infra, or whether it is oil and gas. And that visibility on order book is available today. As far as historical projects are concerned, we are out of majority of them, if not all. Uh, even in the current quarter, we have additionally provided for a CTC loss of 87 crores. Historical project, uh, which has impacted our profitability slightly. And with that, I believe that we are out of all our historical pre-COVID projects in terms of fixed price, in terms of the volatility issue, in terms of freight, all of them. You know, significantly, maybe a few crores here and there. Um, as far as margins, going back to double digit, uh, I think it's important to look at the size and scale. Um, and we are looking at definitely margins improving, but double digit might still take a few more years uh, for us to reach there. Uh, but at the PPT level, we're confident of delivering a 4.5 to 5% margin, uh, which with the 30% growth results in an uh, in a huge improvement in EPS as well as that for the larger organization. Right. Um, kindly bear with my ignorance here. Um, if I look at the operating level prior to this G merger, JMC was almost at double digit levels, 10% level margins. Uh, KPTL standalone had issues because of TND margins being suboptimal and pressures from oil and gas railway segment. So is it now that the overall at the console level, your comments on double digit margins being uh, away uh, for still away for a couple of years, implying that the core KPTL portfolio, which was there in TND, oil and gas railways, witnesses more headwinds, while the civil oriented portfolio of JMC continues to fare uh, well in terms of uh, low teams uh, operating margins? Mr. Uh, Reno, let me again uh, clarify this properly. Right, GMC businesses, a few businesses were showing low team margins, but not consistently for the last three, four years. At the size and scale they were, they were showing low team margin. Now with the growth of 30, 40%, we are investing a lot in building the teams and making sure that delivery across all the projects happen. So on GMC and a few businesses will still continue to be in, in teams, right? The end of business will definitely be teams. Water might not be there. Water would be high single digit, but the end of business will continue to be there. 
As far as TND business is concerned, that is also into uh, you know high single digit. So TND and water would be high single digit. We continue to have pressure in the railway business and the oil and gas business in terms of profitability, and that is where our margins on an average basis get to that those levels which are single digit and not at double digit. Uh, rail and railway and oil and gas. Got it. Uh, thanks much sir, for this. All the best. I'll get back with more questions later. Yeah. Thank you, Nagar. Yeah. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good, good morning, sir. Uh, so, uh, can you please give us some more clue on the international T&D order book and what? Uh, how much is the international T&D order book as of current order book? And uh, how do you see, you know, uh, in FY24 the order outlook? Sure. Uh, more on the international business on the transmission side, our order book visibility as of 31st March, uh, orders in hand is in excess of 11,000 crores. Besides that, we are L1 in orders of around 2,500 crores uh, as we speak about. So, in totality, the visibility today is around 13,500 plus crores as far as the TLI business uh, goes, which includes Linji Montage and Pastel. So if I remove Linji Montage and Parcel, which is approximately 1,800 crores, uh, uh, the, the India International TL business, I repeat TL, uh, not necessarily the international overall portfolio, is around 11,800 crores. As far as growth in this segment is concerned, um, as I said earlier, we are expecting a good 25% plus growth for this business on the India TLI front. As far as uh, Brazil and Sweden are concerned, we do not see them growing at a, a very fast speed. Brazil would do well, uh, but Sweden would not be growing at, at beyond 5 to 10 percent for the current year. Understood, sir. So, can you, sir, of course, you guys did for a four and a half, five percent margin. What are the key risks to these PVT margin guidance for FI24? And uh, and a related question is that what is our fixed price contract in our current order book? Okay, Miss, what is that? Uh, what are the key risks to the margin guidance? Okay, let me first answer this. Uh, see, uh, today where we are, all our businesses have a visible order book. There's literally very minimal amount of book and build which have been considered in the targets of 30% plus growth. So on the revenue front, uh, we don't see any challenges unless there are any geopolitical issues which are completely beyond us. The existing geopolitical issues on places like Afghanistan, Myanmar, and a few other countries have already been removed from the order book. So the order book has been adjusted to that extent of, of those projects, which includes Afghanistan, Myanmar, Ukraine, and that's not a part of our order book. So from a revenue perspective, we see minimal challenges in achieving the 30% growth on an annualized basis. On a margin perspective, a lot of our historical projects are already uh, completed and we have delivered on it. And today with low volatility in all segments of uh, whether it is commodities, whether it is FX, whether it is freight, and with a consistent team which stays with us, uh, we don't see much challenges on achieving the 4.5 to 5% of PVT. So as we stand today, I don't think uh, that should be a challenge in any form um, unless there are geopolitical issues at uh, India as well as global levels which are beyond our, uh, uh, you know, beyond our vision as of today. Understood. Thank you and all the best. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chiranjit Singh from DSC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Morning, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, very yeah, good. Good morning. Good morning. So, thanks for the opportunity. So, my first question is, sir, if you look at the order backlog now, water as a segment has become large for us at around 12,000 crores. So, if you can touch upon the nature of these projects and, you know, how is the competitive intensity and do you see, you know, this becoming larger? And similar, you know, uh, Ali, if you can touch upon the buildings and factories, you know, as a segment, how is the scale up there? And you have touched upon, you know, some of the new areas like data centers and PLA related capex and all those things happening. So in terms of the, you know, competitive intensity margin profile in these two segments, if you can touch upon that, that's the first question. Yeah. So hi, Karanji, this is the party uh, from here. As far as the water business is concerned, uh, you are right, it is currently have a higher order book. And we see next to two, three years a good growth in this business. 
at the same time we are also uh, this pro these projects are extended over 12 13 states so going forward from here onward we will be balancing the act in terms of the spreading the business size because the delivery also uh, is uh, gathering the requirement uh, going forward these projects to be delivered properly right so yes the, the, and we see uh, this sector uh, right from the uh, water supply uh, to the urban and the rural areas it has taken a big traction due to the government agenda as well as there is a lot of activities happening in the micro irrigation those projects are also part of the water division so overall uh, we can see next two to three years there will be good run on the water side coming to the bnf uh, i think this is a stable business in the current environment when the uh, whole sentiment and the uh, real estate sector has revived we will continue to see this momentum to go on and based on that we have also tried to trying to diversify into some more sectors of bnf like airport we already diversified and the data center is the next thing we are looking uh, as far as the margin profile of bnf is concerned our core business of core shell and the uh, in the uh, civil building there uh, the margins because of the price rise of the commodities in general margins uh, will be under pressure we are not going to see a huge uptick in the bnf margin but the new sectors will have a better margin profile because due to the lesser competition in those sectors particularly the data center and the airport but those businesses are yet to be built right so we have just laid the foundation of the airport and based on that we will go going ahead Good, sir. So the other question is, you know, uh, right now the mix in terms of our domestic and international is 60-40 and we are, you know, uh, very positive in terms of getting into railways in the international markets and so you see this mix in terms of domestic and international changing with, you know, larger now, you know, projects available in the international markets. How do you see overall international markets and which particular segments you would like to target more in the international markets? Yeah. So, challenging on the international front, um, you know, we have good visible growth coming out of three primary segments. The first being transmission, which is a core trend. Second, uh, civil in terms of, uh, you know, buildings and factories and airports and, and water in a few select geographies where we've been there for a long time. And third is oil and gas, where we have now qualified, uh, you know, as a contractor in six large Middle East countries. And that's giving us an opportunity to bid for that. So if you ask me from an order book perspective, you'll see all three coming into the next year. As far as railways and, and a few other divisions are concerned, we, we have started that process. But will it, will it convert to a huge order book in the current year? Might not happen. But at least the pre-qualifications will be done, the teams will be built, maybe one order year and there would happen. And a larger chunk of the order book on the international front for some of this business would happen in 24-25. <laughs> Okay, go ahead, sir. So those are the two questions from my side. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Parikshit Kandapal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Hi. An easy congratulations on a good quarter. Good morning, Parikshit. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, so my first question is, uh, sorry I missed uh, the early part of the call. Uh, why was the margins uh, in this quarter lower than uh, like uh, quarter on quarter the margin has declined a bit of margin? Any specific reason, any legacy project? Uh, because I think you still had some GIB issue related projects in your order book. So why was the margins lower in this quarter? So for uh, I mean, no specific reasons as such mix of order book, but a couple of things which have definitely uh, caught us by surprise, if I would use the uh, right word. One was the FX movements in the last uh, six to nine months by which the current year we've seen some loss because we have, it's a timing issue because we are primarily hedged on a slightly lower rate. You've seen in the one, last one year, you know, FX has gone up from 76 rupees to 82 rupees. So there was some small impact. So last year, for Q4, there was a seven crore big gain. This year, current year is a 24, 25 crore loss. So that was one key reason. Second, you know, on some aspects of our uh, uh, overhead expenses, namely traveling and legal, we have seen a huge increase in cost, and, and that's across the board. So, so, you know, that's something which I would say we were caught uh, completely unaware. So, to give you a perspective, our traveling expenses have nearly 
gone up by 35 percent in the current year. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, even if you compare to the pre-COVID year, they are much higher than that. And that's the true, uh, you know, reality of of that uh, entire segment. And we are redoing that uh, those numbers in the current year. Uh, similarly, on legal expenses, given that you know we have. So it's important for for everyone to understand that we are different in terms of having a balance sheet strength on debt, our ability to manage working capital, and our huge growth visibility. So we're not reducing margins. Our margins will continue to be in the range of four and a half to five percent, which would be one of the best in the industry in the EPC industry uh, sector, without compromising on debt, without compromising on working capital. I'm growing at 30 percent for the current year, and similar number. It's not, uh, you know, we. I'm sure all of you know the vision of 2025. 25,000 crore by 2025 is a vision, which means a high double-digit growth even for next year. So our focus is a lot more on growth. So if we go back to our numbers of growth, we were at 12 percent levels five years ago. We have come to 16 to 18 percent. Our target is to take it to 18 to 20 percent in the current year, and beyond 20 percent next year. Mm. So the, the, the entire focus is. Profit continues, profitable growth continues. So just so that we're clear on that. To answer the question on, on where are we investing, uh, I think SKT mentioned earlier some segments like airports, data centers, and civil international, including civil oil and gas might be sectors that we might be average in terms of markets, not, not very, very bad, but not as good as, let's say, the existing business of transmission, b and and water. Mm. But overall basis, we still believe that four and a half to five is easily achievable as far as uh, the current order book and the current year is concerned. So you mean to say that even though there may be incremental investments in these areas, uh, you will have uh, savings on the interest cost and that will drive your uh, uh, PVT margins of around four and a half to five percent. Exactly. Right? And that's but, been our best always. Even when we were at double digits, yes. if you go back and historically see our, reason, uh, our results, you see, while they were double digit, but interest cost was much higher, the position was very different, and, and that's how it was, you know. So, so from a, we, we are improving profitability. Our, our focus is only profitable growth, not top line growth. So, will your debt not increase, sir, because we are going to grow at a very uh, uh, high pace, which had not happened earlier in past, because order inflows have been very good for the company. So, technically, uh, and even your target also for the growth is. Uh, in the range of 25-30 percent. So, uh, will it not result in continued high debt levels for uh, the company in terms of uh, commitment required for working capital and all those things? So, Tina, definitely debt will increase compared to the current levels because in our growth, we cannot grow without debt because we are in a working capital intense business. Important is to see that can we keep our working capital levels below 100 days? Right. Can we? We have targeted an interest cost that at lower than two percent of at two percent of our uh, sales. You know, which is what even in the increased interest cost scenario, that's our target. So while debt would go up, right? But from a rose perspective and profitability perspective, we would still be better than what we had in the past. Okay. So the proportionate increase in debt is not going to be similar to the increase in revenue. Got it. And uh, the working capital in so, so, so yeah. just to add to this, our divestment of non-core assets also continues, right? So we earlier said that indoor we should see cash flows coming into the current year. We're also focusing on, on a road asset where we're planning to sign an non-binding in the current quarter. So with all of that also, uh, at least we're pretty confident uh, that our rose numbers should only improve going forward. Okay, okay. And lastly, on uh, the water uh, business where your size is also increasing, how is the payment cycle on the water business? Sorry, uh, can you repeat the question? Let's get uh, on water, on water business, sir. Uh, since the uh, order book and other inflows have been fairly good, uh, how is the payment cycle uh, in terms of receivables uh, uh, in water business? So, uh, it is a good news sector. Uh, here, our working capital cycle days are less than fifty, but at the same time, since we are spread over thirteen, fourteen states, depending on the political and the uh, the financial condition of the states, we have to keep uh, dabbling with the cash flows and moderating the business growth, right? Mm. So uh, this is a real condition on the ground because some of the states suddenly you find that funds have dried up, we have to wait for a couple of months. But the uh, only thing is that 
uh, most of these projects are supported by the multilateral funded uh, agencies, either the World Bank or the ADB. So there is a certainty uh, on that aspect. Got it, sir. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Akshay Kotari from Envision Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so what was the reason for lower execution in TND on the international side? So actually, uh, a lot of our international TNG order book had a long gestation and family one large order which was uh, in Chile where you know there's a 12 to 18 months on design and environment which is the client's responsibility. So you know from a, from a perspective of where we started the current year, order book had a lot of orders which were long gestation uh, and a lot of orders moved into uh, issues on a geopolitical front whether it was Ukraine, Myanmar, Afghanistan, which is now out of our order book completely. We've removed that from our order book. So given all of that, uh, you know, we, we were just uh, making sure that we delivered on all our commitments of the past, which is all done, and uh, parallelly built an order book with a healthy margin. So, uh, you know, they, yes, there was slight reduction in what we projected at a division level, but the good part is that uh, the visibility now looks very good. It was a mix of those two three things, gestation on some projects and some geopolitical issues in some countries. Okay. Uh, so on the guidance front, uh, in the earlier presentations, we didn't use to uh, mention the word standalone. Uh, and now we have come up with the standalone thing. So I just wanted to know what all comes in standalone. So you did clarify that GMC is a part of standalone. So Linje Montage, Pastel would be in the console, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so thank you for highlighting this. I have also not seen it on a lighter note. Yeah, yeah. So Linji Montage and Fastel would be more than Console. Standalone is our entire KPTL and our 12 GMC business. Console would include the road assets, Shimam Logistics, Linji Montage, Fastel, and the indoor real estate. Okay. So, uh, and they're also, they're, uh, on a console basis, also we're looking at a growth of 25% plus. Uh, although our internal target is higher than that, but for the external world, it is on a console basis also we're looking at a growth of minimum 25% plus. Okay, and TBT margin? TBT margin same in the range of 4 and a half to 5%. So we've seen a huge uh, uh, turnaround in Brazil also, where we have suffered a huge loss in the last two years. And we expect Brazil to be positive on a TBT level, not only at the EBITDA level in the current year. And, and that will also help us from a margin turnaround perspective. So our only challenge now as far as the console margin is on Shubham Logistics, you know, where we're still not seeing our warehouse utilization improving. We're seeing good traction on road assets, we're seeing good traction on Linge Montage, we're seeing good traction on fossil, we're seeing, uh, you know, cash flows coming in on indoor. Our only challenge continues to be Shubham Logistics, uh, where we believe we might still have a year of challenges because warehouses are... Uh, not utilized even to the break even level. It, it's good at a bit high level, but CBT level we have challenges on human logistics. And so, this vision 2025, uh, which is mentioned, it is CY 2025 or FY 2025? It is FY 2025. Okay. Yes, 2025 next year, 24 FY 24 Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, lastly, uh, long term borrowings have uh, decreased and short term borrowings have increased. So, what is the reason for that? Well, I don't think there would be any specific reason except for maybe uh, the interest cost uh, as well as availability of, uh, uh, you know, long-term loans at a given point of time. It's not strategic as much as it's about opportunity of having uh, lower interest cost, one. Second, it's also driven by our, our visibility on cash flows for the near future. You know, so if you see Q4, our cash flows were very, very good. Right? And if you see your visibility of cash flows to be very good in the near future, you typically love to keep short-term. But getting into the next year, we should be again taking some long-term loans once interest rates stabilize at a particular level. Okay. And uh, our other intangible uh, assets have decreased and asset held for sale have increased. Uh, so what was the reason for that? So I think other intangible assets primarily has some write-offs coming on uh, on a few of our investments. Uh, you know, so Shubham Logistics was one of them as well as, uh, you know, uh, the losses on Brazil. Um, as far as asset held for sale, I think we have classified one of the road assets as, as asset held for sale, 
uh, because we believe that we will be getting a non-binding offer very, very soon. It might not even go beyond uh, this month. And uh, we already are in, in active touch with it. Yesterday, we have got in principle approval from the senior management also. So that's why it's kept for asset health for sale. And I'm pretty confident of signing that uh, in this month itself, not even June. So, and there is also an, a liability associated with asset health for sale. So net off, there has been no movement. So uh, what is that liability? It would be the, the loans on that, uh, you know, that portfolio. It's, it's a similar thing. But I'll have to see those details and come back to you. Thanks a lot, and I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Next question is from Lionel Bharat Said from Quest Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning, Maniji and Tipati ji, and congratulations on good set of number. Good morning, Bharat. Good morning, good morning, Bharat. Sir, my first question is: We since uh, last one of two year, we have been expanding. Our geographical as well as uh, within that geography vertical also we are expanding new vertical we are building so in order I mean in medium term perspective what are exactly that no each uh, geography has uh, some kind of I mean a uh, geopolitical or surprises or so what is our risk management uh, capability that we are building from medium term perspective so this kind of a surprise should not really affect us and so Bharat sir, I think a very important question for us uh, you know this entire uh, last four years whether it started from COVID then it started from the war uh, a lot of learning for us um, I think hello hello yeah yeah sir. I think the good part is historically we've been following this consistent policy of taking ECGC across all our projects. And that's why even if when you look at Afghanistan, you know, more than 80% of our dues have come from ECGC. So we will continue to make sure that at least on a global front, uh, we will take ECGC on all projects. Uh, you know, where at least uh, in, in those countries where you believe that even there's a 1% risk. So that's one thing which we are very focused on. Second, we have slowly over the last three years, if you look at our portfolio, we have moved to a lot of developed countries, right? So look at Chile, look at Australia, look at our expansion in LATAM, look at what we are doing in few of our geographies in neighboring countries which are, which are funded by Exim. So our focus is, uh, compared to what we were four years ago, our focus is to move to a lot more developed economies, which one has limited competition, where delivery is the key uh, requirement, and, the, you know, while you can get in there as a small player and then eventually grow to be a large player. So that's been a second focus. Third, on a, on a risk management perspective, we further strengthen our, our risk management uh, committee, both at a, at a business unit level, at a SBG level, which is strategic business group level, as well as at the company level, where we look at a lot of this very, very closely. I would be happy to sometimes discuss with you about how our risk profile in the last three years. You know, three years ago, majority of our exposure was in countries which were more in the category of B and C. But today, more than 50% of our exposure in countries which are more in the category of A and B from an ECGC rating perspective. Okay. So, so that's also helped us. So gradually, we've, we've obviously learned from the last three, four years, and we're making sure that as much as we can, we cover through prudent risk management policies. The one more aspect uh, is our breakup of fixed and variable order book. So if you look at today, our, our variable order book is closer to 65% of our total order book size. At some, at actually, more than 65%. I think someone uh, Ram has corrected me for that. Uh, but but that's what is gradually growing. So as long as we get into that variable order book a lot more, at least we do not lose on a lot of surprises. We might not gain on surprises because that's not our core business, but we do not lose on surprises. So it's been a mix of new countries, variable to fix, uh, strengthening our risk management across the geographies and continuing taking insurance for majority of the countries, if not all. Okay, great. So that is a largely say on the external side that we, we are working, but internal like execution in this developed country, I mean, timeline, timeliness is a very important. So execution uh, perspective, how we are building those capabilities so that we sh internally should not default over there. So uh, Bharat Bhai, uh, you know, important 
for and then you know you've been associated for the company for long to so understand that we're going international only in businesses which have grown in India for at least five to seven years. So if you look at our, our approach, it's been that you know we 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 were doing only transmission international till three years ago. Okay. Last five to seven years, we built huge capabilities on buildings and factories and civil. We went international on that just one year ago. Oil and gas, we built huge capabilities in India over the last 10 years. We're going international now. So we have the posture from the fact that not to go international unless we have a strong team on all aspects, whether it is tendering, whether it is execution, whether it is project management, and whether it is the commercial side of it. So we are not going international any business which is new in nature. right? So if you look at our international growth, it's been only in sectors where we have a strong team in India, on the basis of which we build a strong international team, on the basis of which we have built over a period of time and done one order, delivered, and then grown it further. One. Second, we've also not grown very fast on new businesses. So if you see, even in Transmission International, if you go back to history 10 years ago, you know, we would take three, four orders, deliver, and then go to the next six <laughs> orders. So that's what we've done here also. We've taken five, six orders, we're building, wrapping up the team, and then we will take further larger orders and size and scale. We are in no hurry for, for top line growth. Let me assure you, we are in no hurry for top line growth. For us, this is profit which makes a lot more important than, than revenue. That's it. And last book, what are our capex for two years? 24 and 25? So for the current year, we budgeted for capex around 275 crores based on the current order book. Uh, if you win any large orders in urban infra or international oil and gas, we might revise this uh, capex upward. But otherwise, we believe uh, on an analyzed basis, we should be okay with 275 to 300 crores for this year and next year. Okay. All the best, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. Next question is from the line of Ashwani Sharma from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good morning. Thanks for the opportunity. So my first question is on the debt. Uh, so you did alluded on the fact that there will be increase in the debt going ahead as the uh, order book has you know gone up. But in case if you can just put some numbers, how do you see you know debt uh, shaping up in after 24 and 25? And uh, related question is this that you did mention on the you know uh, interest cost saving because of the merger. Uh, here also, if you can put some number, how what kind of savings do you see because of the merger? Sure. So uh, on a, on a uh, standalone basis, our net debt levels are around 1700 crores while we speak on 31st March. Uh, we believe that uh, we should be at levels of not beyond uh, 22 to 2300 crores by the year end, even with a 30 percent growth. So that's on a on a net debt basis. As far as interest cost is concerned, even in the rising interest cost scenario, we're still targeting our interest cost as a percentage to be sales to be below 2%. Right? And that's where we have inbuilt all the savings coming from uh, the, the GMC market, all the savings coming from uh, you know, our, our effective working capital management, and also increased advances, which we are not taking at some point of time, given the huge difference in the interest rate on advances versus, versus the banking interest rate. So with the combination of all of this, I think, uh, you know, uh, if you look at the control numbers where they're going to be at 20,000 plus crores, uh, you know, at, at standalone numbers which would be uh, at, a, at a number of anywhere between 18 to 19,000 crores, we believe that our interest costs uh, should be in the range of, at a standalone level, in the range of 3 to 3 uh, or crores, if not slightly lower than that. Thank you. So, do you see any any in, infusion in in road assets uh, during the year or uh, on logistics uh, just from the losses? So, uh, can you repeat the question? Uh, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but your voice is not coming very clearly. It's coming a little muffled. Can I request you to speak through the handset? Yeah, sorry, sorry for that. Uh, any uh, infusion required in uh, in road assets and on logistics during the year? So, uh, road, uh, road assets, if you know, these assets are almost eight to nine years in their life cycle time and they will be requiring the O&M, the major maintenance, right? So, uh, we will be requiring to infuse about 50 to 60 crores towards that account. If you look at two uh, SPVs, even at the PBT level, they are breaking even. One SPV will still uh, require the fund support. 
so uh, that is the situation uh, currently so uh, we have to infuse the money but major amount of that will go towards the uh, major uh, maintenance which is due now on the projects and uh, yeah on shubham logistics uh, you know we do not see immediate infusion of capital required uh, but we will revisit that at the end of q2 um, if you do not see improvement in traction just to repay some of the external loans at shubham logistics the external loan number is around 170 crores as of 31st march uh, we might be revisiting this number at the end of q2 okay just a bookkeeping question, sir. On the uh, international subsidiaries, both Fasil and uh, uh, Linje Montage, if you can just provide the bottom line numbers or PBT numbers. So, as far as uh, on an analyzed basis, uh, Linje Montage had a profit of approximately 44 crores uh, at a KPT of Sweden level. And as far as uh, Fasil is concerned, we had a loss of last quarter, I remember, around 56 crores. Yeah, Kalpatru Gradual is a loss of 56 crores. and. Uh, Capital Sweden has a profit of 44 crores on an annualized basis. Uh, the revenue number was 1,002 crores and with a profit at 44 crores. As far as Brazil is concerned, revenue of 439 crores with a loss of 56 crores. Yeah. Sir, so, last question from my side. Uh, the NWC number, which is 100, is what you are saying. Uh, can Is it possible to give us the breakup uh, between T&D business and the uh, other uh, civil and DRM business? I might not have that breakup immediately. It might help if you can just connect with the team. You know, any of them, Vishesh Kunal, and they'll be happy to provide you those details. Sure, sir. Thanks, thanks. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Amin from State Bank of India. Please go ahead. Amin, can you hear us? Hello, Amin, can you hear us? <laughs> you to no response. We move on to the next participant. The next question is from Ryan of Parishit Kandapal from HDFC. Please go ahead. Sorry, sir. I got dropped out earlier. My question is on the uh, promoter share holding. So after the merger, we have seen in this quarter, the promoter share holding has come down to 47% because of the merger. And uh, given the bad press, which we recently had on the group, do you think now when we have uh, come below the psychological level of 50%, can promoter kind of offload some more shares in the market and this holding go towards more 40 percent or will it going uh, will go above 50 percent so what's your view there so Parikshit, uh, we uh, we do not have any specific view on this question you know we have not had any discussion with promoters on this aspect our only discussion with them was on the pledge uh, component and where they told us that pledge will continuously reduce only uh, they have a plan going forward, but you'll see the pledge reducing uh, going on quarter on quarter. As far as the promoter holding is concerned, we have not had any specific discussion with the promoter on this aspect. Okay. Well, second question on the road monetization. So you said that one asset will get monetized. So likely, what could be the potential, the deal value, or you can also give some sense on what is the total equity investment in that asset, and what, whether we'll be able to recover a large part of it, or there could be potentially a write-off. So give some sense on that. For instance, we might not be able to share the deal contours at this stage because we are at the signing stage of the non-binding offer. Uh, we can only tell you that uh, are we getting much more than the equity what we have invested. Okay. And how is the total equity investment in that asset? No, I'll, I'll not be able to give you those controls right now, as I said earlier, but uh, you know, just just I'll keep patient for the next two, three, four weeks and and we might be able to share those details uh, uh, once we sign the non-binding offer. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you and wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take that as a last question. On behalf of Kalpatru Power Transmission Limited and MK Global Financial Services, we thank all the participants. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
ಹ್ಞೂ